Now let us analyze each of the dilutive or the convertible securities one by one. The first one that we'll take would be the preferred convertible shares. Now what are the features of preferred convertible shares? Like the regular preferred shares, they will also receive the dividends. That is one part. But they also are eligible for converting into common shares. So they can convert into common shares at a predetermined price. So say for example, one preferred share, which is convertible preferred share, converts into let's say five common shares. So if this happens, then the denominator would increase. So how do you take this impact of uh, you know convertible shares on uh, while you calculate the EPS? So earlier we have seen that the basic EPS or the simple structure EPS was calculated as net income less the preferred dividends. And here in the denominator, there would, that would be weighted average common shares. So this is what we have done to calculate the basic EPS. Now, while we had calculated basic EPS, we must note two things. One, that when we are talking about preferred dividends, preferred dividends can come from different classes of preferred dividends. One, there could be a simple one where, you know, it is only eligible for the dividends. So the regular ones which we have always talked about. Second, these could be convertible preferred dividends. So a dividends which you are paying to the convertible preferred shareholders would be also included here. So now let us look at the net impact of uh, preferred convertible shares, having understood this basic EPS formula. Let us now calculate EPS, which includes the effect of the convertible preferred shares. So let's look at the denominator first. The denominator would contain obviously number of weighted average common shares plus what we'll add, we'll add the converted shares. So preferred shares that got converted into number of common shares. So here there would be five if there was only one preferred share. So I'll just write this as plus the converted preferred shares converted into common shares. So the denominator would increase, right? Now let's look at the numerator. The numerator was net income minus the preferred dividends. Now we have noted earlier that this dividend can be because of two things. One is the simple and the convertible preferred dividends. We essentially want to see the return on both the common share as well as what happens on the conversion of the preferred share. So if conversions happen, then you will not have to pay this dividend. I'll just reiterate, if conversion of preferred shares happen, then they are converted into common shares. And if they're converted into common shares, then you have to no more pay any kind of dividend here. So what we'll do is that instead of deducting, reducing it from directly from the preferred dividends, what we'll do is we'll just add back this number called convertible preferred dividends in the numerator. So this will be the net impact on the EPS when we are talking about the preferred convertible shares. 